Measuring volume. By the end of this video, you should be able to use a graduated cylinder to measure volume of a liquid, record volume measurements to the correct degree of precision, and measure the volume of a solid object by water displacement. Now we're going to look at how to measure volume of a liquid. When you look in the cabinet of glassware above your lab station, you'll find these three pieces of glassware. We have a beaker, a graduated cylinder, and a flask. Notice that beakers and flasks have very few volume markings on them, whereas the graduated cylinder has a whole lot of volume markings on it. To measure a liquid, I'm going to use the graduated cylinder. Beakers and flasks are only to contain liquids we've already measured. Our lab procedure tells us to measure up 50 milliliters of copper chloride solution. So here's my stock bottle of copper chloride solution. I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to carefully pour till I'm at about the 50 milliliter mark. You can pour a little more quickly at first and then slow down as you get close. I'm going to now put the lid back on my stock bottle. Now I want to measure the precise volume of the liquid in the graduated cylinder. So I'm going to want to get on eye level with the liquid in the cylinder. You might have to duck down to do that. When you do this, you'll notice that the water level actually dips a bit. This is called the meniscus. So you want to take a reading from the bottom of the meniscus, the bottom of the curved part of the liquid. And again, I'm going to figure out all the digits I know for sure, so I can see pretty clearly that this is exactly between 51 and 52 milliliters. So I'm going to record my volume here as 51.5 milliliters, the 0.5 being my estimated digit. Now I want to measure the volume of this solid object. Since this solid object is somewhat irregularly shaped, it would be hard to measure its volume using a ruler. Therefore, I'm going to use a method called water displacement. I'm going to take my graduated cylinder and I'm going to put some amount of water in there. I usually fill it about halfway. Now I'm going to take a precise reading of the initial volume of the water in the cylinder. Again, get on eye level with the meniscus and I can see that this is between 57 and 58. So I'm going to call this 57.5 milliliters of water. Now I'm going to carefully drop the cylinder into the graduated cylinder. It's important to tip the cylinder because this is glass and that's heavy, so it'll break the bottom if you just drop it straight down. You'll notice that the volume has now increased. The amount that the volume has increased is equal to the volume of the piece of the solid that I've put in there. I can take a new volume measurement, this is my final volume, and this looks like it's 64.0 milliliters. I'm going to say .0 because it looks like it's exactly on the line for 64. Therefore, our final volume is 64.0. In order to determine the volume of the object I was trying to measure by water displacement, I'm going to take my final volume and from that I'm going to subtract my initial volume because the difference between the two volumes, which in this case is 6.5 milliliters, is equal to the volume of the object. That's the end of this video. Take a second to review these goals and make sure you can do all three of these things. So I'm going to get on eye level with the graduated cylinder so that I'm looking